Um, one of the things that I noticed you do really well in Song of Ice and Fire is the foreshadowing. Um, there, are th- you know, there are things in book three that are foreshadowed as far back as book two and maybe even book one. And I was wondering if you have difficulty balancing the foreshadowing with spontaneity as a writer. Um, but it, 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 if you have these things that you've foreshadowed, then uh, how, how do you balance that with spontaneity? Do you feel like you're straightjacketing yourself to a certain plot? Or? No, I don't, I don't f- find that foreshadowing things lessens the spontaneity. Um, I, I, I can see why you think it might, but it, <laughs> if, I don't know. For some reason it doesn't. I don't, I don't have a formal outline. I'm not one of these writers who uh, outlines every, what's going to be in every scene, what's going to be in every chapter. I might be faster if I did. I did have to do that in Hollywood. Uh, I had never done that before, and when I got to Hollywood, I didn't want to do that, but they made me. Uh, I, I kept saying, just let me write the script, and I'll, I'll, then you'll see how it comes out. And, no, no, I have to have the outline first. So I got used to outlining there, but I never liked it. It did take away some of the spontaneity. I, I felt, uh, you know, I, in some senses, I had already told the story, even though I had only told it in, in shorthand. And retelling, retelling the story over again it's not as much fun as telling the story for the first time. Um, there was a wonderful novel that came out uh, oh, a decade or more ago uh, called Replay by Ken Grimwood. Um, some of you may have read it. Science fiction novel. It's about a guy who wakes up uh, one day. Uh, he's a, like a 45-year-old businessman. He has a heart attack. He dies. He suddenly wakes up. He's, he's 17 years old. He's in his college dormitory. And he has his whole life to live over. It's, you know, it's 1970. 68 again or whatever it is and uh, it's the story of what happens to him as he lives that over and when I read that book I thought about myself and what would it what would it be like for me if I suddenly was back at Northwestern it was 1968 and I woke up and I'm a freshman in my dormitory but I have all my memories so I know what my life was like and I know all the stories that I wrote and it was actually a terrifying thought because I said well wait a minute (laughs) I have to write Sand Kings again, you know? I, it turned out pretty well the last time, but I don't remember exactly how it goes. I mean, what if I mess it up this time? And not only that, but that I have to write the bad stories again, the ones that nobody <laughs> liked when they came out. Or can I just, like, skip over them? Uh, you know, can, so outlining is almost a little bit like that. It's, it's, it's like, okay, you told the story once in outline, now you have to tell it again with, like, words, and um, so I prefer not to do that. You, know, you do a class with 20 writers in it, and you get a sense of who's really talented and who's good and who's more journeyman and the ones who you really don't think are going to make it. But they surprise you, people who, who didn't seem, at least initially, to be uh, super talented build good careers by mere perseverance and okay i got a rejection well i'm writing a new story okay i got another rejection i'm writing a new story i'm going to keep at it i'm going to keep at it i mean ray bradbury famously papered an entire room of uh his house with uh, his rejection slips there is uh both in hollywood and even in the world of publishing this is uh, undoubtedly a certain role for networking going to something like the santa fe festival meeting people That's a real advantage, being charming and friendly and even more noticeable, I think, in Hollywood where a lot of the uh, pitches that people do are verbal. Um, So you you get someone who's in the room and they're pitching an idea for a new TV show. What is that person like? How good are they in the room, as they say? Uh, Just telling the story verbally. Are they hooking the the executives and the, the studio people who are listening to it. I often tell new writers, if you need security, this is not the profession for you. Writing is a series of rolling the dice. And, you know, I look at my own career and a great start, but then I hit an iceberg and my ship sank. And I was taking courses in how to sell real estate for no money down, because I thought I was about to lose my house. But then, I persisted and and I had some good luck to pick up for the bad luck and you know then a few years down the line I hit another iceberg and that ship sunk too but I kept going and uh, here I am today. I think I'm typical of most writers you know if I get a hundred good reviews I am very pleased but it's the one bad review that really sticks in the craw and pisses you off. <laughs> and that's the one you can't forget. You know, I got a hundred good ones, but oh, how dare you say that? 
he's so wrong. You have to resist the urge to write a letter to the editor disputing a review. Never, never argue with the bad reviews. Big mistake. That's something a new writer should also remember.